given the vectors here, P and Q, okay, we want to find vector P minus vector Q graphically and algebraically. Okay, so let's quickly plot these vectors. Okay, I'm going to plot our vector P in blue. This guy has an x component of positive 2 and a y component of positive 6. So if we start out from the origin, it's going to point this way. It's going to point towards this direction. So this here is a vector P. Okay, and I'm going to plot a vector Q in red. Okay, this guy has an x component of positive 6 and a y component of negative 5. So if we start from the origin, it's going to point towards this dot, this point here, and this is our vector Q. Okay. Now, now, well, now that we have the vectors, we want to find this, right? Vector P minus vector Q, and well, graphically, and we know that whenever we want to subtract vectors graphically, we first need to change the expression a little bit. So that we are adding the vectors. What are we adding? We are adding the negative of vector Q. Right? We have vector P plus the negative of vector Q. Now that we have the addition problem, right? We're, we're adding the vectors graphically now. Instead of subtracting vectors graphically, we're now adding vectors graphically. So we can use either the tip-to-tail method or the parallelogram method, right? And since we have used uh, the tip-to-tail method to solve for two questions a while ago, so let's use the parallelogram this time. The parallelogram method. Okay. The parallelogram method will require us to have the tails of the two factors connected first, right? So the first step, we need the tails connected. Okay. Then we're going to shift the two factors across that little space there to form a parallelogram in such a way that the tips will also be connected, right? So we need the tip connected to the tip, right? That's the parallelogram method, and uh, let's get to it, okay? So right now we have a pos we have the original vector Q. That's not what we want. We want the negative version of our vector Q. So let me change this vector here. Uh, I'm going to use I'm going to use purple. Okay. The only thing that we're changing would be the direction of this vector. Okay. The magnitude will stay the same. It's okay. so I'm going to highlight this purple vector here, and this vector is our negative vector q. Okay. And since we don't really need this red red vector anymore, I'm going to move it away and place it here just for reference, okay? So we have the two vectors here that we're actually interested in, okay? Let's move things around, okay? The first step here, we need the tail touching the tail, okay? It doesn't matter which vectors we move first, okay? We can move uh, our blue vector, we can move our purple vector, but uh, if I am to move our purple vector, then our parallelogram will probably go out of out of the screen here. Okay, so I'm going to move our vector p. I'm going to move our vector p so that the tail of this vector will touch the tail of the other purple vector. Okay, that's the first step, right? The first step is done. We have the tails connected at this point here, and. Uh, the next step would be to duplicate these two vectors and shift them across so that we form we can form a parallelogram. And so I'm gonna copy this vector here and shift it across. And you realize that this vector is our original vector in the original space. Okay, and then I need to duplicate this vector as well. Okay, duplicate this. Copy and shift it across to form a parallelogram like this. Okay, that's the first. Uh, that's the second step, right? We have the tips connected at this point here. Let me just uh, quickly label these. Well, not label. Highlight these points. Okay, so our final step would be to form a factor that connects the, these two uh, these two dots, right? That factor is going to start out from here, and it's going to point to this ending dot here. OK, 
okay? The initial point would be, uh, will, will be exactly on the point where the two tails are connected, and then the arrowhead is going to point, well, it's going to be at the point where the tips are connected, okay? So this green vector here is our vector r. Okay, so uh, we've kind of found our, well, we, we've kind of solved for the first part of the question, okay? But let's, let's express a vector r in rectangular form, okay? So, what is the x component of this vector? I'm going to write out all the i, I had and j hats first, okay? So, the x component of vector r would be this distance here. Let me use a different color. Be this distance here, right? This is our q, no, r, vector r. Sorry, the x component of vector r. What am I writing? Okay, I'm sorry. And we need the y component, which is this distance here. This is y, r sub y. Okay, let's count. Uh, let's count boxes here now. The x component is clearly negative two because we're moving to the left by two units. So this is negative two. This negative sign here. And then a y component, how many units are we moving upwards? So from here to here, that's five units. And then another five units, then one more unit. So that's 11 units upwards. So we have minus two plus 11. I should not write it in this color. Okay, 11 j hat. Okay, so we have finished the first part of a question. This is the answer. Okay, we want to verify this answer by doing the second part of a question here. Okay, finding the difference algebraically. We know that when we subtract vectors algebraically, that's really straightforward, right? All we need to do would be to, well, find a difference between all the x components of all the vectors involved, and then do the same for y component, right? Find the, all, find all, find the difference between all the y components. Okay, so let me write it here. Instead of stacking the two vectors, right, vertically and then aligning all the x and y components, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to write, I'm going to write two brackets here. Okay, this bracket is for the x component of our resultant vector, and this uh, this bracket here it will be for the y component of our uh, vector r, okay, resultant vector. Okay, so this bracket here we're going to have the x component of vector p subtracting the x component of our vector q. So that's two minus four, right? Two minus 4 and for this bracket here we are going to have well the y component of vector p subtracting the y component of our vector q so that's going to be 6 minus negative 5 6 minus negative 5 and simplifying these expressions here let's see what we have okay i'm going to write down the i and j hats well, 2 minus 4, that's negative 2, right? And 6 minus negative 5, this is going to be positive 11. And so we've verified our previous answer here. So we have finished the question.